Hi everyone, today on my bench I've got ASUS ROG Strix B550F Gaming Revision 1.00. This board came to me from a repair shop, which is obvious that I see the missing BIOS chip. So, literally, we already have one issue fixed even before trying to power it on. We, of course, will try to power it on without BIOS chip, but I do not expect any activity. Just some of these 10 by voltages should be up and running. Anyway, we'll see. Let's check the resistances in order to get a try to power it on and maybe to remove the M2 hitsense. Okay, all the resistance is a normal, let's try to power it on. Okay, standby. Standby is good, it's like 70 milliamps. Power button. Trying to press the power button. And of course, nothing happens. Okay. Let's put the CPU. Power on the CPU, 132. Pressing power button. Yeah, it's getting a little hit. Try to see we have V core voltage, and we do. V core is the left blood voltage for the CPU cores supplied by the VRM. It must stay within the precise range for stable operation. Okay, let's remove heat sinks and move to visual inspection. Yeah, the bias chip removed hard. The SIO area, which often has knocked off components, everything appears visually normal here. The flux near the bias flashback chip is not a good sign. Knocked off capacitor. Another one. And one more. Since there were so many knocked off components, I decided to remove all the heat sinks to inspect the VRM and PCH areas. Who knows what surprises we might find there. And I was totally right, a sea of flux around the PCH is a clear sign that someone has either replaced or reheated the chip and maybe even worked on his PWM controller. Let's look at the microscope. Wow, look how many flux here. Uh, 
I guess we have to clean the flux and try to measure the resistances on the PCAH power lines. I measured all the power rails near the PCH and didn't detect any clear shorts. That's why I decided to reinstall the BIOS chip and remove the burn socket headers. So I went ahead and cleaned up the PCH area and got rid of the burn fan and uh, the bug header and I also dropped in a BIOS chip from a donor board. Before that I flashed it with the latest firmware using the programmer. 
On the back of the board there are a few knocked off parts, but they are just filter capacitors, nothing critical like resistors or inductors, so they shouldn't stop the board from powering on. At this point I'm ready to try power it up. If it does boot, then I'll come back and replace those missing capacitors and uh, headers. So alright, let's plug it in and see if this board comes back to life or we're in for another surprise. Okay, off screen here. Uh, here you can see the current consumption, so let's power it on. Okay, 120, power button, LED. No matter what I do, the board just won't post. The DRAM LED stays on and it's completely stuck there. That usually points to the bias issue, or sometimes lost data lines between the CPU and DRAM slots. I checked the slots and all the connections are fine. However, I found a missing capacitor on the back of the board. It's sitting on the SM bus data line, which might be important for communication with the hub. So it's not just a filtering cap, it actually plays a role in the data path. I decided to restore it. After finally restoring that capacitor, it's time to power the board on and see if we've been successful. So, I realized I had soldered the wrong BIOS chip. On top, it was from the same manufacturer, it was the wrong family, with slightly different communication logic. I had used a Macronix, while according to the board view, this motherboard acquires a Vinbond W25Q256JW. So, they both are 1.8 volt devices, but they have different JDEC IDs and in some cases slightly different common timing. Fortunately, I've already found the correct chip on another donor board, and so the plan now is to flash it with the proper firmware and solder it in place. Let's do it! So I swept in the correct BIOS chip and flushed it with the same firmware, so the capacity matches. Now let's plug in power and see what happens. Okay, pressing the power button now. 
Okay, we have LED light up and CPU. So this is definitely interesting. Will we have a pop screen? So I have no picture. When I plug in my HDMI cable, I'm trying to get the picture on the CPU. However, this board officially does not support Ryzen 3200G, which I have. So that means that the internal graphic couldn't work. So we'll try to get a post screen with uh, the external GPU. Let's try. Okay, so let's try to power it on. Okay, so VRAM, CPU, VGA, and boot. Do we have a picture? Boom, there it is. The board is posting, finally. Honestly, I was ready to give up on this one and throw it under the donor shell. The real issue turned out to be the bias chip. Even though the size was right, I had soldered in chip from the wrong manufacturer and here's the trick. Every bias uh, chip has a JDAC ID, basically an ID code the motherboard checks. If that ID doesn't match, what it expects, the board just refused to talk to the chip. Is the ASUS protecting against malfunctions or just little commercial lock-in? Hard to say. But what matters is we got this board working again and it feels so good to bring it back to life. And that's it, another dead board brought back to life. If you enjoyed watching this repair journey, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next motherboard resurrection. Get questions about BIOS chips, JDAC IDs, or maybe a board you're struggling with? Drop a comment below. I read them all in my future your question in a future videos. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep fixing, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!